Right. Click on that, and then we're going to click here mm -hmm. and, do, and do it again, I guess, or click on it so it's app share. It's not app share. Sure, okay. Mm -hmm. And OK. Then you're going to redo. Minimize this? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we're going to do You want me to say? No. Okay. All right. Uh, good afternoon. I'm, I'm Mike Kaysani. This is Gordon Snyder. Again, Gordon, beautiful presentation this morning. And uh, I, told him, I told him he did a beautiful job setting up the guy to go after him. So he's like a warm up comedian. <laughs> but uh, uh, we're going to talk today about uh, e-books and, and self-publishing. And this is, this is an emerging area. And I think you're going to see more and more of this. And, and uh, I'll show you a couple of e-books that I'm reading now. Uh, one is um, called Disrupting Class by uh, Clay Christensen. And then he's written another one about universities. And they actually are talking about a lot of the things that, uh, that the, the second keynote this morning talked about, where uh, higher education is broken and we need to move more from, uh, from uh, instructor-centric learning to student-centric learning. So I think e-books are going to be one way that we can do that. Uh, and I think that the textbook publishers are, in a lot of respects, in the same position that the music companies were in. And they have, you know, uh, rooms or, or buildings full of salespeople trying to sell paper textbooks, and the market's just uh, going away. All right. So we'll start with just a little video here to show you uh, if you don't move forward with technology, again, like the textbook publishers are resistant to and the music industry has been resistant to, uh, what, what's the future look like? It was pretty cool. Yeah, the glass case. Took some pictures of it. 
um, July 2007, they started Mike Goblin right away. I remember him texting me and telling me he was waiting in line at uh, the Apple store. Um, by November 2007, we saw some of these numbers this morning. Uh, One million sold in the U.S. and they started selling uh, selling over in the uh, over in Europe. How much was it originally? Yeah, so oh, it was it was 4.99 originally. Yeah, it wasn't it was subsidized. Yeah, yeah. So if you have one, you should hang out. You know, it's good to sort of keep the history. You can also hang out with the box too. Uh, I think the boxes are going to be worth just as much money as the as the phone someday. Like if you look at Rolex watches and the Rolex watch boxes, some of the boxes are like crazy. Hundreds of dollars now. <laughs> um, it, it's interesting, but um, the App Store. If you've been in an Apple Store lately, you've seen a lot of there. <laughs> um, but anyways, they, they launched the App Store for the for the iPhone April 10, 2008. Um, about half a million or so are available today. Around a third of them are free. Um, that's just for the iPhone and the iPod Touch. Um, again, they continue to come up with with new devices. Uh, Apple's been good. I think uh, coming out with devices that work and. They've had very few products that have not uh, recently that have not uh, not sold extremely well. Now, where are we going? Um, there's way too much text on here, but the uh, <laughs> we are heading towards uh, the reader prices are dropping way down. We we'll talk about some of them in a minute, but you can get a cheap Kindle now for with ads for So it's it, it's at a price point now where. It's they're affordable for just about everybody, and uh, that's the way it's going. So um, you can see it. You can see it coming. There's different file formats, and we'll talk about some of these a little more. The big one seems to be EPUB right now. Uh, EPUB appears to be the most popular format, but minimally, and most of them are supporting these different formats. And we'll talk about some of the different formats a little later. But PDFs and pictures and, and, and text files. The, uh, the Kindle 4 NA, this is back, this is back, I think, in October, this was announced. Um, HTML, the Kindle 4 NA switched over and they, they decided to support HTML5. Um, this Kindle 4 NA, so these are sort of their next generation Kindle books. Um, creating, uh, there's a bunch of different features uh, that, uh, that are part of this, uh, part of this release. So, the, here's some more additional uh, pictures from this Kindle uh, HTML5 format stuff. So you can have these sort of rich, enhanced, uh, um, high resolution uh, kind of content, you know, with these new books on the Kindle Fire, for example. Now, this is one of Mike's slides. Okay. Sure, sure. Uh, this, this is just from, uh, from a few days ago, but. Uh, uh, Apple, uh, it's come out that Apple has some sort of media event later this, this month, and uh, all the rumors seem to be pointing to this event not dealing with any particular device, but instead it's going to talk about publishing and iBooks, so it's going to be focused on, on, on what they're doing with iBooks. And uh, there's a lot of rumors about it, but one of the things uh, is uh, Mike Kane is a, a blogger here. And he's been thinking of this idea of what he's calling X books or enhanced books for a long time. And so he's hoping and, and sort of guessing that this announcement is going to deal with, with uh, these enhanced books that now are going to uh, 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 be digital books that have audio, video, and, and, and again, uh, iBooks on the iPad can already do that, but now you're going to be able to add interactive elements into those. So you imagine you have a biology textbook and then at the end of a unit you might have an interactive self-assessment where they can take a little quiz right there in the book and know whether or not they've mastered the material before they move on. Right, so, so this is what he's doing. And again, uh, Apple uses the EPUB format which is uh, the most popular format. Uh, Kindle doesn't use that and they've announced their, uh, as Gordon said, this, uh, this version 8 that, that they're using, which is similar to EPUB, but Apple is on the, the board that uh, is, has been working on the EPUB 3 specification, which is the newest version of this EPUB file format. 
And uh, again, one of the things that he he is projecting that they're going to announce this month is that it's going to have WebKit uh, embedded in uh, iBook. So WebKit is the the rendering engine in the browser. So if it's the Safari browser, the Chrome browser, the mobile Safari, mobile Chrome. So all of the m mobile browsers, the most popular ones, all use WebKit for their their web rendering. And so if that shows up there now, you're going to be able to build interactive web content into an iBook. So anybody with any kind of web development background is going to be able to start to customize these text books. Right? Uh, uh, another thing that he points to is that they're going to start to make these books available via the web. So then you'll be able to just open a web browser and read a book. You can already do that to some extent with the Kindle books. So there is a Kindle viewer that you can uh, view on the web page. Uh, he's looking at uh, comic book content and uh, content from Disney. He's also hoping Electronic Arts is a big game publisher. So, so he's hoping that they'll be showcased in this as well. So now you start to combine e-books with interactive content and gaming content and you imagine uh, you bring that into the classroom now where you have some sort of educational game embedded in a textbook. So it's not on a device that they have to go away from their content if, if they have that educational content sitting right there and get that in the, in the uh, context of what they're reading. And he's also hoping, and, and I've been hoping that Adobe would do this. Adobe has some beautiful <coughs> web publishing and, and uh, print publishing tools. I've been hoping that they would take one of those tools and just create an EPUB export from those. So you could build a very beautiful uh, ebook and then just publish it straight from Adobe. But he's hoping that Apple will come out with, with some sort of tool to do that as well, some sort of uh, ebook, uh, interactive ebook creator. So we'll know in a couple weeks whether or not uh, any of this comes to pass. And here, I think Gordon. Yeah, this is one of mine. The um, <laughs> we, had an we had an intervention with him where we're introducing less tests now. So <laughs> 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 but um, back almost a year ago, Borders came out with this book brewer thing, and I'm not going to do anymore. But the book brewer still does. And, and what it is, it's a service that allows you to publish the equivalent of an ebook. And I've been experimenting a little bit with my blog content. That's some time I'll show it to you. Where I've been tagging uh, content, I've been writing about the problem of switch telephone network before it all goes away. More of a historical thing for me, and it's out of interest. Um, but um, that's something that right now you go to my blog and sort of uh, um, you can just search on the tags and, and just get that get that content and do tagging it in a way where it can be found. So and it's all into the, the the format of a book, you know, the chapters or each each post is a, is a few pages of content maybe. So that, that's that's been pretty interesting. That's the whole idea of this thing right here. You can take, take little chunks of content, sort of bundle it all together, and uh, and, and publish it as an ebook. Um, so you can upload your content, and you're seeing this from other publishers too. Um, you can set your own price. Um, you can determine um, where you want to sell it. You know, uh, Amazon, Apple, you know, Borders doesn't exist anymore, and then publish it. Okay, you can publish it in e in ePub format, the Kindle format, um, any of the e-readers. There's two tiers. It's eighty nine ninety nine. Gives you an ISBN. Um, the advanced two hundred dollar package also gives a, a master ePub file. You can share it if you you know if you're using Blackboard or something like that. You can just put this thing up on your in your element and most students download it. So it's pretty it's pretty neat. It's a neat idea. And we're seeing a lot of this kind of stuff now uh, uh, happening. Um, same thing, Amazon, a little after, I think a little after uh, Book Brewer thing, launched uh, something called Kindle Singles. And uh, so it's designed for publishing a little less than, you know, less than the equivalent of a book. Um, 10,000, 30,000 words, between 30 and 90 printed pages. That's about twice the length of an article in New Yorker, uh, maybe several chapters of a book. So, um, and they're looking for, uh, all kinds of content here. I mean, they publish just about anything here. They're looking for, you know, science kind of stuff, uh, 
So maybe you've got some stuff you've put together. Um, maybe it's not a full book. Maybe it's a couple chapters on a, on a special topic. Uh, you could you know, get published that stuff and start, and start selling it here. So it's, uh, and there's, uh, maybe you do a little search. Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing. Page. Question. What about like doing copy and paste in copy? Like Microsoft Office? Oh, you got to Screenshots? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, okay. You need permission from Microsoft. You just can't give them credit. That's not good enough. Um, you know, I don't know. I believe you used to. I, I haven't done it recently. I, I try to avoid that kind of the, the copyright stuff. Um, I suppose you could do it with the statute. What are they going to do? They're going to try to take it down. You know, it's. Uh, you know, it's your work for someone else. Well, just, just a screenshot of uh, Microsoft Word. So, so maybe if it's the Microsoft Word uh, manual or yeah. Quick Start Guide. Um, I, I, again, I don't, th I don't see why. I mean, if you're promoting their product, I don't see why they would come after you. I mean, and I've seen, I've seen people. Who, but it is. Well, it is. So you do need permission. Um, yeah. 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 You have my phone. Thank you. I had this slide up this morning, and this is engaged. I was talking about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. But um, it's, it's very interesting. We're working on an e-book project with them, taking up some, some a book that, a piece of a book that Mike wrote and some other authors working with Hofstra University now, we're rolling that into an e-book with Cengage. You know, the world's largest publisher, um, they're very, there's nobody from Cengage here. Um, <laughs> they're, they're not too far from us, they're not too far from the Albany area, so I get out there uh, every few months for a meeting usually. And the meetings are full of sales people. You know, you get a room with as many people as we have in this room, and, and maybe four or five of them are not sales people. And they're all scared. They're all, they're all worried about their jobs. Mm -hmm. um, but they're, they're shifted on. You know, they're shifting to this this, uh, this this evolution here. They're moving from print and what they're calling digital collections, uh, online databases, portal products. That space up in uh, up in um, uh, in New York State there was originally a, a sales office. Um, there's still a lot of salespeople there, but now they got a lot of people going in. And they are curating, and they're and they're tagging, and they're refereeing all these uh, all these articles they have. They have all this content. They've got the equivalent, I think, of 15 over 15 million you know, pieces of content right now that they're organizing and tagging, throwing into a database, making it all searchable. So, um, and uh, they're creating this digital, you know, these, these digital portals. Um, most of the portal content now is text and audio, but there uh, there's a lot of multimedia content coming in right now too. So it's it's a very interesting time in the publishing world. And it's pretty scary for the salesperson. There's, there's a company uh, called Academic Hub, which is relatively new within the last year. <coughs> and uh, you can publish your own writings. They have tools online, and, and then they, you know, they can help you out with printing and so forth. And they will do real-time copyright clearance. So if they include other people's information, they can price that for you on what it takes copyright. So they can they can go to what Microsoft and say. Negotiate that. We have somebody that comes to uh, uh, some of our sessions there, and that guy with a math book. He's got this great math book, but he's got screenshots. There's a lot of bunch of stuff. I have a graphic book. I can't say. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. He's got screenshots of where yeah, yeah, he does. Oh, he can get screenshots of the application. Yeah, that's what he was talking about. Yeah. So, uh, um, but anyway, this is uh, even more technical. And the Discover, Discover Education Digital Textbook Project, and this is some of the content. They have all kinds of resources and, and you know, a lot of video uh, um, content, they've got toolkits, all this stuff is online right now. Uh, they got stuff for teachers, they got stuff for all kinds of stuff for students. So this is the kind of content we're, we're seeing be developed for, for again for mobile devices. It's really, it's really mobile content. You know, most of this stuff is not it's not being designed to be consumed on a computer. It's, it's, it's being designed to for access on mobile devices. Um, and I think ultimately those devices are going to be tablets. They're probably not going to be uh, uh, 
Um, or, uh, you know, the, 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 the Kindle uh, uh, e-ink kind of, kind of interface. It's some sort of a color, color tablet. Yeah. I don't know if you, you, you put the no product. Yes. Yeah. So that's on the iPad, and there's there's three effects. You know? yeah. So there's there's a lot of cool stuff. Some readers, I guess I'll talk about these. We can go through these really quick. There's different versions of the Kindle. You know, starting at seventy nine dollars. Um, right now, sort of their big product right now, I guess, is the Fire the one that's pushing the most. Yeah. The, by the way, the, um, my uh, mother in law's sister is about eighty eight, and she got a uh, Kindle Touch for Christmas from her son. And so she doesn't even have a computer, so so uh, she wants to charge it, and all she's got is a USB cable, nothing to plug it into. So I have to show her when she would get the adapter, and then it it, it looks like there. it's a tiny screen, and you have to click on that screen. And so for an 88 year old woman trying to navigate and click on that screen is very difficult. So that's you know you're, they're moving away from the the physical buttons with those devices, but again there's an audience for that, and I don't think. Uh, 88-year-old woman is the audience, or 88-year-old person. Uh, Barnes, Barnes & Noble has the Nook. Um, and you've seen that this, this one is actually pretty nice. Yeah, it does have the Nook. The color. Yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, so this looks an option. Comparable. Uh, the, Sony, the Sony stuff is... is and it's very nicely manufactured and it's beautiful. You pick, you pick up a Sony reader and it's just very nice. But there's a limited collection of uh, titles available. It's kind of missed the state high bookstore. Sony's done that in their entire history. It has to be Sony. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they come out of the Amazon, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 It's just, but anyway, it's, well, they don't have the Sony style stores anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to be able to go in and look at them, but they're very nice uh, devices. Um, so uh, there's the Combo uh, e reader touch edition, this is another touch device, um, $129. High <coughs> um, River Story HP, uh, this is Google's platform. Gabby, yeah, remember we tried to go buy one of these at Target? Yeah, they had no idea what to put on. It was frozen, so I had a chance to play with that. It was a great stream of illusion. We've been in the day or not, it was only Target. Now, what are you doing? Um, and then the iPad, uh, which everybody's been taking a pretty good look at, I think. And most people, a lot of you probably haven't. Um, there's different pros and cons. Probably the biggest pro of the, of the iPad is it's, it's not just a reader, it's the app stuff. Um, How does the fact that it, it still doesn't get flash coded, or you don't think right. it does? I know. It doesn't bother me. Yeah. Uh, I have yeah. one too, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and Adobe, yeah, Adobe has, has, has basically given up on getting Flash on any mobile devices. Really? So yeah, they've announced that they're they're gonna. Uh, I think they're not going to. Uh, they'll continue to update the ones they put out there, but they're not developing Flash for, for mobile devices in the future. Very interesting. If you're interested in Steve Jobs' biography, there's some pretty interesting stuff about Flash and Adobe. It's worth the read just to read about that. But um, Flash is also pretty battery. Uh, it's battery hungry. Um, I've got a flash blocker running on my laptop. I think I double the light. Yeah. Issues with accessibility. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> a lot of issues. Yeah. Um, here's this. Well, this is. Who's that guy? Jeff <laughs> <laughs> there. But, but again, this, this was referenced this morning, though, also the fact that uh, Amazon. Uh, Surpassed uh, Kindle book sales. Uh, uh, their Kindle book sales surpassed their print book sales. So I think that's a, a tipping point for this industry because that sort of indicates now that we've moved into the digital era now, uh, at least for Amazon. And and again, the the bricks and mortar bookstores are 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 becoming less and less popular. popular. And here, if you look at December, uh, Amazon came out with the, the Kindle Fire, and so they were selling one million of these a week in, in December. So, so this was a popular product, and, and you saw the growth chart. So again, in one month, they sold four million of these. Right? 
And here, some predictions here. They're talking that uh, uh, right now it's one million books in the Kindle store, but they're saying that the mobile ebook sales, so uh, ebook sales to mobile devices, is going to be a ten billion dollar market by 2016. And I, I think the second presentation this morning, you saw that all of these forecasts were way too conservative. Everything sort of happens much quick, much quicker than they project. Uh, and I think this is going to we talked about Apple's a little bit. That, and there's other and there's other app stores and other other devices. Uh, a lot of people probably have Android phones. Uh, anybody have a Windows phone? I, I haven't seen one. There's no one. <laughs> so there's other there's other app stores. There's Blackberry store, there's the, uh, the Nokia store, Samsung's got a store. They, they've all got uh, app stores. But um, that was 2010 information. But 90% of app downloads in 2010 came from Apple's app store, and it's still it's still way above 80%. It's still pretty close. It's a little lower than 90% now, but it, it's it's pretty close. So. Um, We'll talk a little bit about how that stuff, how these apps are work, and we'll focus on, on the Apple, the Apple model. Yes. Not only for Apple, or is that all Apple Um No, that's all Apple Oh, really? Ninety percent. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Apple's definitely more than yeah. still. Yeah. I had this slide up here this morning too. So I'll look yeah. over that. But, you know, this is, all, this is a, I think this is a good, a good thing to think about. You know, can that be a book? Yeah, why not? Um, and this, this telecom tycoon, again, I, I love this idea because it's basically you have this city and you're putting out cell towers and you're building a telecommunications infrastructure. So imagine if that were in a communications book, an e-book, and that's sort of in right next to your content. And so throughout the book, all right, now we've understood you know, uh, return on investment. So now we're going to talk about uh, calculating the return on investment on, on this uh, infrastructure we built. Um, the the uh, if you look at the Apple, and again, this is Apple. Uh, Apple apps approved. There's a lot of them. 129,000 something. Uh, there's 434,000 available now. Uh, there's 147,000 something iPad apps and. and uh, Matt Gaps in seven thousand something. Um, they retired, you know, they retired. We'll talk about how that works in a little bit, but it's just it's just ramps right off the chart. Um, who buys? If you look at um and these are things I think you want to think about with your students. Your students are looking at yeah. thirty three is the medium age, which kind of surprised me. Um it's got just forty percent female. Uh, mobile games the medium age is thirty one. 50-50 um, females, male-female split, and the average person um, for the life of an iPhone downloads 21 apps, <laughs> and more than half of them are games. So the game is pretty, game is pretty serious, uh, pretty serious business, right? Um, I think because they're talking. What do you want? 21 apps. Yeah. That's average. Mm -hmm. I think Mike's probably mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. 10 mm -hmm. times. That's mm -hmm. an iPhone. A year? A year? Mm -hmm. What is the contract now? Three years? 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 Uh, the most important category, though, if you look at, uh, and again, this is the iPhone App Store, um, top 25. If you get in the top 25 with a popular app like Angry Birds, um, they they uh, pay these paid apps profit between $12,000 and $22,000 per day, seven days a week, three hundred sixty-five days a year. Um, there's free apps, which they're free, but uh, there's commercial sites. Uh, Greater than twenty thousand downloads per day, um, so you can you can make money publishing free apps. Right? You get in that top twenty-five, you gotta you gotta have pretty popular free apps. You gotta. Are they doing much free? Well, it's much free. Um, so the uh, fifty-four percent of free apps that fewer than a thousand users. So um, 
They can't sell ads, they don't make any money. So more than half of them don't work or fail. Uh, the average ad is used about 30 days. Are you seeing any advertising on ebooks? Yep. Uh, just on uh, the Kindle. Uh, uh, no, no, I mean, I mean, in the book itself, where it's where the yeah. book is cheaper uh, to have the that advertising in I haven't, I haven't seen that yet. No, not yet. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. 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 It's just one buying that, it's yeah. cheaper. Yeah. Um, if we look at uh, Angry Birds as an example, um, Affordable, entertaining, easy to use. It was developed in December 2009 by a Finland company. A Finnish company, Rovio Mobile. Over 12 million copies sold at 99 cents. You can do some math. It's a 70 30 split with Apple. The publisher gets, gets 70, Apple pays 30. Um, so the developers got you know, this much, Apple got this much. And they kept the game fresh. One of the things with Angry Birds, although I don't, I don't know if it's still fresh, but they kept it fresh for a long time. You know, they, they outlived their life expectancy. They have a movie out now, and they have this little oh, yeah. the plushy <laughs> As far as opportunities go, um, and there's there's uh, for your students there's XNA development you can develop for the uh, um, for the Xbox 360 and the Windows Phone uh, there's a, uh, a software development kit out for XNA um, and again I mean we sit in a sit in a little house up in Vermont somewhere uh, who is uh, uh, creating apps and, and selling them online and making a pretty nice living actually you don't have to be in Silicon Valley. Um, uh, iOS development, there's, maybe you take a look at the Apple uh, iOS development page. There's all kinds of tutorials and, and uh, uh, it's, it's, it's all there. If you want to sit there and take the time, there's video tutorials, the Stanford course, lots of content, the Stanford course, yeah, there's lots of stuff out there to learn how to do this stuff um, and to use with your students in the classes. Um, there's the, the Android development, they've got their SDK also. So, Fun stuff. Um, this is a, a little game that one of the AT uh, students, a, a student, where was, where was Wake Technical? Wake, yeah, Wake Technical. This guy, uh, I don't have a video, I don't think I have a video of it embedded in here. But this, he made this little game called Froggy Map. And he was, he was demonstrating it at the AT conference a couple of years ago, so we videotaped them. But so again, he made it for his niece. He was teaching his niece, uh, she was preschool math. and. You know, little math equations pop up, and uh, three plus two. So the frog has to, you know, you clip the right uh, worm, and the frog eats the worm and the points. Um, so it's a cute little game, and uh, it's making some money. And he has he has some other games under development too. And and Gabby, you you were at uh, spent a week at Apple, and you met a kid that was selling games or selling apps? Yeah, um, one of the kids there uh, made a bunch of apps for the boxes for video games. So basically, um, it was just a drag and drop template. He wrote the content and then he put it up there on the app store. Not only was he making good money, it was enough to put him on the charts for Apple to um, invite him to Coco Camp, the workshop that was literally like an hour ago. A <laughs> Coco <laughs> Camp. Um, it's run by Apple, I believe, every summer for um, undergraduate students. You should tell me about a little bit about that, Gabby. How did you find out about that? Um, my college sent an email out three days before the application was due. <laughs> um, it's not well known at all, but um, if you do some googling, of, uh, searching around, you can find out little bits and pieces of it. Um, as a professor, I'd say the best bet is to get in touch directly with Apple recruiters and ask them about it. Um, usually the application goes live in March, I think it was. What's the date for the begin? Coco Camp? Coco Camp? Coco Camp? Coco Camp? Coco And the, uh, they didn't want to see them. They took Gabby out to Palo Alto and she spent a week in Palo Alto and they paid for the whole thing. Yeah, it's a little thing, and you're working with Apple engineers the whole time. Um, the professor we had actually wrote the documentation on a lot of the iPhone SDK stuff, so you know they know what they're talking about. 
and it's a really great experience. And you're Johnny, Johnny Ives came in, right? Yeah, it was a, not supposed to talk. Not supposed to talk. <laughs> 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 We're all undergraduate students. So we had some rising seniors in there, and we also had, I think, one that's going to be a freshman, so not even in college yet. I'd say you get in touch with Apple and ask them about it. Okay. Um, tell them that you want to order it all through soon. So that was, that was interesting. Um, back to books, I mean, the whole interactive engagement, being able to sync multiple devices. You read up to a certain point on one device, you sync that, that everything just syncs up. All your notes get synced up, your highlights get synced up. Uh, I find myself reading a lot on my phone, probably more than anything else. Um, occasionally on my computer and on the iPad too. But most of my reading seems to be done when I'm sitting in the car waiting for something to read. Um, EPUB files. Do you want to take this part? Yeah, I know. But, uh, so again, EPUB is, is the main format we focus on. Uh, it's because it's a uh, open standard. Uh, 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 Amazon has a proprietary standard. You can also use Mobi, which uh, M O B I, uh, to get them on Kindle devices. But their own uh, Amazon standard is, is proprietary. Um, but again, the, the advantage of this is unlike a PDF. So a PDF is basically a fixed document. You're stuck with what, whatever you have there. And, and it's nice in, in one sense because you keep the fidelity of your document. So whatever was in your original document stays that way in a PDF. But you don't have the advantages that uh, with the Kindle and with the iPad, you can change the text size and everything reformats to, to match. Right? So you can't do that with, uh, with PDF. So let me show you. I want to make it interactive here. So, switch over here. I don't. I think we have like 90 slides, and we've only gone through 30. So. I don't know. But I don't think we made it to 30. All right. Yeah. So one of the things I want to show you. This is course smart. So this is one of the textbook publishers. So this is their app and you actually have to go and you have to request access for an uh, electronic desk copy and then it shows up in your library. Uh, you have to log on to access it. So if you don't have an internet connection, you can't get access to your book. So it's sort of cumbersome. But if you take a look at what this is, this is a Windows 7 book. I was teaching Windows 7 in the fall. And this is, uh, again, a not too much better than just a PDF. Right. So I can pinch and zoom here and I can zoom in a little bit. But let me show you if I want to highlight something, there's a little pencil here. I get a, a rectangle pops up and I have to draw this rectangle around what I want to highlight and then I can click highlight here like that. So it's uh, very light green there that you can't see that well. But again, this is from the publisher. So they have, they create this content. They have this whole opportunity. Imagine Windows 7, you could put little videos in there with each of the labs. So you just did this lab, watch this video if you had any problems. Nothing, all right? Nothing like that. Uh, no, no web links, nothing in here. All right, so, so very disappointing. Uh, but now if you take a look at, for example, the Kindle app, all right. This is the Kindle app. And by the way, I mentioned the uh, two Clayton Christensen books. Uh, Disrupting Class is about uh, uh, innovation and, and uh, disruption theory in uh, K through 12. And then Innovate University is about uh, how uh, the the current system in, in higher ed can be disrupted. Right. But if you take a look over here, this is the Kindle app. And so uh, right away you have a couple, there's, uh, these are samples here. This is uh, Western Civilization. So this is an enhanced Kindle book. So they're already, because they know the iPad can support audio and video, they have a book here with audio and video. So again, not great yet, but let me turn up the volume here. Okay, so I don't hear anything. I think I muted the whole thing. in order to prove that lightning is indeed electricity. Whether that actually happened or not is another story entirely. Franklin certainly suggested that such an experiment would prove that lightning... Okay, so, so that's uh, 
their first generation sort of enhanced ebooks. And so that's available at the Amazon store from the, from the Kindle store, but it has audio and video embedded into it. Um, well, uh, in both the, the Amazon, the Kindle app, and the iBooks app, any ebook by default, you, so you don't even have to do anything. So any, if you create an ebook, it's going to have that ability. Uh, so if you click on a word here, uh, it will then it will give you the definition here. You can go to Wikipedia, Google. You can highlight it. And again, much much better than the uh, publishers. And here, if you want to reformat the text, I can change the background color if I. Having a hard time seeing, I can make the text bigger. All right, and that's that's the advantage of of EPUB. All right, and by the way, on that Kindle Touch, it took me like two hours to figure out how to change the text size. It's just not, it, it just wasn't intuitive. But uh, yeah, it's an Apple guy. But I buy most of my books from the Kindle store because uh, because even though I, I like the iBooks app better, the books are cheaper at the Kindle store, and and there's more selection. All right, it's just more cumbersome to get them, and that's that's Apple's fault. They 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 want to make it hard to get them. Well, I I think that uh, again the the books are significantly cheaper uh, as as e-books than they are as, as print books. I mean I mean for some of the not in all disciplines. Not in all disciplines, yeah, but the article that just came out this week that said students who are using e-books are saving one dollar per book. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. Well, in the technical area, they tend to be. Yeah, they are in the technical area. They don't tend to be in other areas. And course smart has some interesting strategies. Right. Right. Well. You have to really look at the whole. Well, there's a package of other things, other interactive web based stuff. They do, and then of course. The, it goes away at the if they right, read, it, months, yeah. read it for a certain period of time, which then means students are paying fifty percent or or perhaps more in some cases, and then at the end they don't have anything to sell back mm -hmm. or they don't get anything at all for runs after six months. Mm -hmm. so you just have to take it all into account. Right, and and I think that the what's happening to the publishers is the same thing that happened to the music industry because I have students and I just tell them I don't even want to know about it. But if I they ask what's the ISBN for the book, they go to one of these torrent sites and before you know we're five minutes into class, they have a PDF copy of the textbook for the class and they're passing it around the class. Okay. So so that sort of pressure is going to force the publishers, I think, to to to, to do some, do better with the pricing. And especially when you're talking about digital, because with digital you don't have any of the printing costs, you don't have any of the distribution costs that that you could you could justify. You still have those salespeople. Well, we we can get rid of them. Uh, my 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 first job offer. I was a mechanical engineer. My first job offer was sales uh, for Exxon Mobil in Houston, Texas. And I I you know I said I, I'm an engineer. I don't want to do sales. But all right. So this this is the Kindle app. And and again I. Uh, uh, I'm teaching a, a Linux uh, uh, course, uh, uh, LAMP, so setting up LAMP is one of the textbooks I'm using for that. Uh, the code book uh, is just a good book on the history of cryptography from hi uh, historical times to, to quantum cryptography. And that one, I, I have a print copy, but I just love that book. So having it just on my iPad where I can, well, I can have it where I want it. And one thing I want to reference here. Oops, um, this uh, you see this um, OSX Lion. This is the Ars Technica review. So um, John Syracuse writes this, this very long, detailed review. And so if you look at this, this is a uh, uh, 119 pages on here, or uh, 1900 or 1900 pages. But just as a lark, he took the review that he normally writes online. He put it on the Kindle store for 4.99, and in three days had 25,000 downloads. For just an article that he was writing on on a blog, so that's that's sort of the the potential that this sort of stuff has. If you're especially if you're topical, if you're writing something uh, like PSTN is very topical. So if you're writing about the uh, the, the public switch telephone network, well, no, the kids are going to want to know what are those things that used to be on the wall, Dad. Uh, all right. um, about five minutes. All right. So um, just a couple more things. Uh, um, one of the things this is. This is going to be interesting. This is uh, Al Gore's book, um, and so there was a company, Push Pop Press, that helped him create this book. And uh, it's an interactive book with video and audio, very rich graphics and text, uh, easy to navigate. 
you can jump to the text here like this. Push Pop Press was bought by Facebook. So now you imagine Facebook, it, what, what happens with Facebook with all the users they have, they start publishing books. All right. All right. That, that, you, you think the, uh, those salespeople are scared, now wait till Facebook uh, uh, is on the radar. Yeah, this one this one has if you blow into the microphone the windmills will spin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh this one is David Eagleman. David Eagleman is a neuroscientist. And this is one of the models that we're looking at. So we have a uh, uh NSF project grant that we've submitted to sort of build on this idea. And let this load here. You'll have access to all 90 of our slides, so you can uh, review. Uh oh, crashed. So this is called uh, "Why the Net Matters," and of course it's not going to load today. Sure. Well, well, well. What some people are doing, um, they're using the iPad, and then iPad supports uh, AirPlay, which is a, a wireless uh, technology to connect to to uh, a, a, an Apple TV. So an Apple TV is a ninety-nine dollar little black box, and they're connecting that through, through HDMI to a projector, and then just walking around with the iPad and presenting directly with the iPad. So you could use a stylus and take notes, you could have your textbook and zoom in and pinch on figures and talk about the figures. So 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 that's one way people are looking at doing that. All right, that one's not going to load here. Let me switch back here. And uh we we'll probably have two two minutes. So ten seconds over. Okay. All right. But again I think we have a, a recording of an older version of this so so uh, we'll share that with you as well. Um, I have my business cards uh, if you want to learn more about the grant proposal that we submitted and what we're hoping to do with that, we, we want to basically build a, a generic framework that then anybody can take their content and pop it in. We're looking at not only uh, the uh, Apple platform, iOS, but also looking at Android and also HTML5 and even Flash, right? Because again, not everybody's going to have one of these mobile devices. So if it's available in HTML5 and Flash for a web browser, it's still going to provide access to students who may not have access yet to uh, an iPad or an Android device. So, Gordon, any, anything you want to add? He, he left me out to that was good. <laughs> oh, and, and by the way, if you want to create these EPUB files as quickly, Pages, which is Apple's word processor, their equivalent of Microsoft Word, exports directly to uh, to uh, EPUB. So then you can just put it on an iPad. Uh, uh, Adobe InDesign and OpenOffice uh, with, a, with an EPUB plugin will create EPUB. Uh, Siegel, uh, eCub, there are a bunch of different tools here that will help you to create EPUB from scratch. EPUB is like HTML and XML, so uh, if you if you navigate into it, you can you can actually edit the files. Calibre uh, is a nice tool for converting from a bunch of different ver uh, file types. And let's see here, uh, this is just now uh, this is somebody who just took some. Uh, Sort of non-fiction uh, that they write, and just over the weekend, this is a non-technical person, and was able to create an EPUB file and get it on their iPad, and you know, just really three hours worth of work. All right. Uh, you want to mention the new version of EPUB? Yeah, EPUB three is the new version, and there's some people who are not happy with that version because it's got some of the multimedia in there, and they don't feel that that should be in there. But um, but uh, EPUB three. Our students would do. Our students would disagree, but but yeah, EPUB 3 has explicit support for all of the audio and video, and uh, again, some of the things that I think are going to make uh, these ebooks much more exciting than 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 course smart ebooks. You gave us how many lines, but is there like a size limit that you recommend, or do you can go over one gig or? Megabytes or whatever. Well, I mean, in terms of size of the, of the file, yeah. um, it, it, it's going to depend on, on the, the you know if they're going to be downloading it wirelessly. It's going to depend on the speed of the connection. So uh, I think if it's over 20 megabytes, probably want to be Wi-Fi. 
But um, again, the other advantage of these EPUB files with audio and video in it, it's embedded in the file. It's not streaming from YouTube or from a server anywhere. It's in the file. So they can, they can be on the beach and reading it. You know, the, they can access it from anywhere. Thank you. Uh, thanks.